This is what I have, and this is what I want. Can I do it? Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, last time, amongst an alarming number of errors, I managed to cast in sterling silver this Spartan pendant which I designed. And whilst it's not perfect, I still like it. I do a lot of work in silver, and folks often ask why I don't do work in gold. And the answer is very simple. I can't afford to. Gold has always been an expensive metal. And even though prices fluctuate, I think it will always be out of my league. And I guess it's the same for many of you guys. But there is a way that we can take less expensive metals like silver and even cheaper metals like copper, brass and bronze and give them the appearance of something more precious. And that's through gold plating. Now, I'm aware of the theory. I remember doing electroplating experiments when I was at school. The principle was simple. A battery, a container filled with an acidic solution, a piece of sacrificial conductive metal, and a second conductive item that will receive a thin coating from the first. The sacrificial metal is connected to the positive anode side of the battery and the other to the negative cathode terminal. The electrical current from the battery actually strips away a microscopically small layer of the sacrificial metal, passes this through the solution and deposits it on the second item, leaving a thin coating. Now, this is a good theory, but in practice, it can be more difficult. I've experimented with silver plating in the past and failed dismally. Many perceive gold plating as a bit of a black art, traditionally and perhaps best done on an industrial scale. But I'm going to have a go at doing this at home using this electroplater by Pepe Tools. This is a professional bit of kit. So obviously it's not going to be cheap, but at the same time, compared to the price of gold, it's an absolute bargain. In case you're confused by the name, a rectifier is an electronic device that takes mains alternating current and converts it to direct current. And in this case, gives us the ability to adjust voltage, which is critical in good electroplating. It comes with these crocodile clipped leads, which, thanks to the fork connectors, simply slide beneath these color coded screw connectors. The kit also comes with an immersion heater. This has a DIN connector, which plugs securely into the back of the plater. You will need a 1000 milliliter glass beaker, which doesn't come with a kit, but they can be cheaply purchased on Amazon. I also bought this glass stirring rod, which again is very affordable. Unlike our classic school day setup, we're not going to be using a piece of sacrificial metal, which is lucky as most of us don't have gold bars lying around the place. Instead, we'll make use of a solution that already contains gold. Again, these aren't cheap and they need to be purchased separately but you get plenty of use out of them. Whilst I may be gold plating in this instance, remember this device from Pepe Tools is an electro plater and you can get a variety of solutions to plate with like gold, silver or nickel. You can even vary the color of the gold choosing between 14, 18 and 24 karat solutions. As a general rule, the higher the carrot, the deeper and darker the gold finish. In this video, I'll be using the 14 carat as I want a light finish. As we're not using the sacrificial metal, we have no anode. So we need to purchase one of those too. Again, you can buy these in various metals, depending on the solutions you're using. But for gold plating, a stainless steel anode is typically used. The anode is easily bent and curved to fill the bottom of the beaker and the training lead has a banana plug that pushes into the plater's connection point. Notice that I've disconnected the red positive lead altogether 
as that won't be needed. The immersion heater fits perfectly into the glass beaker. Before you pour in the solution, remember you're messing with some serious chemical nasties here. Ensure that you're in a well ventilated area and that you wear gloves, apron, goggles and for the hell of it, a respirator. Work safely and keep the kiddies out of the way. The plater is easily controlled by twiddling and pushing the knob, something we've all tried at some point. Now this Pro model has storage space for five individual programs, a reverse polarity feature and even an integrated amp hour counter, all of which is great news for professional users, but is pretty confusing for a dimwit like me. Thankfully this device accommodates amateur users as well. The plating solution tells me that I need a temperature of 55 to 60 degrees Celsius and a voltage of between 2 and 4 volts. So I select heater, dial it to 60 and push the button to start. The extra lights on the plater let me know that the immersion heater has started and the screen actually tells me the current temperature. Now this is surprisingly fast. I'd say it took between 10 and 15 minutes to go from 16 to 60 degrees Celsius. Controlling voltage is equally simple. I just selected manual, chose 2.5 volts and again pushed to start. I ignored all the issues of time, polarity and current. Those features are there for those that need them, but right now I don't. Before proceeding, obviously I needed to prepare the work. You don't want to contaminate your plating solution and for best results, you need the item that's going to be plated to be very clean. So do polish to the standard you desire. After this, you will need to remove all the polish and grease, even that from your fingerprints. So from this point, always wear gloves. Wash the item well in warm soapy water, rinse it thoroughly, and then wash in alcohol. Lastly, Dip the item into clean distilled water, not tap water, as that contains chemicals. One thing I forgot to mention is this copper wire. You need to connect the workpiece to the cathode, and you could use the crocodile clip provided, but you will end up plating that as well. So I used a piece of copper wire, which I also made sure was nice and clean. Normally, we'd go straight into plating at this stage, but that would be too easy for me. I seem to love making life complicated for myself. I do like having a prominent shiny helmet, so I didn't want everything gold, just this part. That meant I had to insulate areas that I didn't want covering in gold. Now, you can buy special marker pens to achieve this, but the nibs are a little too big for my needs. But I did have these fine nibbed CD marker pens. I reasoned that they were basically the same thing and got colouring. Still wearing the gloves you'll notice. This took care of the awkward to get at areas, but for the main parts, I decided to steal my wife's nail varnish. Again, I'm only painting where I don't want the gold to go. Importantly, I haven't coated the hoop, as that's where the copper wire will go and we need a good clean electrical connection point. Once thoroughly dry, I was ready to go. I gave the solution a good stir with the glass rod. There's two other jars here and they contain distilled water. The pendant gets dipped into the first of these jars to wash away any dust, etc. Then it's into the preheated solution for 30 seconds, but watch carefully. It's amazingly quick. I'm agitating the piece to make sure there's no trapped air pockets. Don't touch the work to the anode as you will short out the connection. This isn't a problem with the Pepe tools plater, which is protected against this, but other machines might not be as good. 
Finally, a rinse in the second jar. Now that to me looks great. To remove the nail varnish, I used ordinary acetone, which gets to work straight away. Two minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner was all it needed. Another rinse in distilled water, and here it is, and I'm thrilled. This really was surprisingly easy, and I think it looks great. What a difference this is going to make to my metal casting ventures. Yes, there's a small area of gold around the hoop that has plated, but metal plating is microscopically thin. We can quickly remove unwanted patches by machine polishing. But for me, I like it as it is, and I'm going to leave it alone. So there we go, gold plating at home with a Pepe Tools plater. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, take care and thanks for watching.